Hey everyone. Welcome to Top Tech News. This is your news channel for getting updated with the latest tech news headlines and their impact on business and our lives. To read the full news article for any of the news that we cover, simply click on its link given below in the description. To stay updated, show us some love and hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. This way you would be informed whenever we upload a new video. Hi, my name is D and I am your host for today. Today's top headlines are 2021 MacBook Pro will scrap touch bar, bring new design and MagSafe connector. YouTube finally delivers HDR videos on the Xbox One. Peugeot EC01 crossover electric bicycle launched. MediaTek's Dimensity 1200 crunches 5G, AI, and image data at the edge. Tesla claims a software engineer stole critical automated software from its warp drive system. Let's get started. 2021 MacBook Pro will scrap touch bar, bring new design and MagSafe connector. Last month noted Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo gave out confirmation that Apple's upcoming 2021 MacBook Air and 13-inch MacBook Pro will debut with mini-LED displays and M1 chipsets. Now we get more details on the all-new 14-inches and 16-inch MacBook Pros which are said to bring major redesigns. Quo shares that the new top-end models will feature a square cut design on the top and bottom halves which is a natural evolution of the 2018 iPad Pro and iPhone 12 industrial design. In addition, both models are said to bring back Apple's MagSafe charging connector which was last seen on Mac laptops back in 2017 with the last non a MacBook Air. The optional OLED touch bar will finally be removed altogether with all new models having physical function keys instead. Port selection is said to be wider this time around as past MacBook users were not thrilled with having to carry around dongles. As expected, Apple-designed ARM processors will be the only option for the new MacBooks. Both new models will use a similar heat sink system as the current 16-inch model for optimal thermal management. There's no mention if the new 14-inches and 16-inch MacBook Pros will come with mini LED displays. YouTube finally delivers HDR videos on the Xbox One. You can finally watch YouTube videos in HDR on last-gen Xbox One S and One X consoles, along with the latest Xbox Series S and Xbox Series 10 models, according to Google. A source confirmed this from an open YouTube HDR video on a recent Xbox One console that it's streaming in the PQ Rec.2020 HDR format using the VP92 codec. YouTube HDR videos are also noticeably brighter and more colorful. The maximum resolution will depend on your console, with the Xbox Series 10 supporting 4K at up to 60fps, and the Xbox One S delivering 1440p HDR at 60fps. Xbox One has supported HDR for a while now with streaming services like Netflix and Prime Video. Microsoft has been promising YouTube HDR support on Xbox since way back in 2017. Why it took so long is anyone's guess, but as before Microsoft and YouTube have struggled to get HDR to work properly on Windows 10. What's the good of HDR on YouTube? For one thing you can find eye-popping videos that take full advantage of the format, unlike the barely noticeable implementation you'll see on Netflix and other streaming services. Hopefully, it will also motivate more creators to do videos and live streaming in HDR so we can get more content in that format. Peugeot EC01 crossover electric bicycle launched. Peugeot has just launched its latest electric bicycle model, known as the Peugeot EC01 crossover. The company has made impressive strides in the electric bicycle market lately, with a half-dozen crossover-style models launched late last year. Now the Peugeot EC01 crossover adds a new Bosch-powered step-through frame to the list. Designed and manufactured in France, the bike features a classic upright seating position to give riders a lofty vantage point of the road ahead. The 57mm, or 2.25 inches, wide Schwalbe Hurricane tires help the bike clear obstacles better than the narrow tires typically found on dedicated urban-only e-bikes. A front suspension fork ensures that the bike can tackle tougher riding than typical urban e-bikes, while the inclusion of fenders and a rear rack provide the utility that most e-bike commuters require. The Peugeot EC01 crossover sports a Bosch Performance CX mid-drive motor paired with a removable 500 watt hours battery hidden within the frame. The company claims that the battery is sufficient for up to 120 kilometers, or 75 miles, of range, when used in the lowest assist level. The mid-drive motor is rated for 63 newton meters of torque, and Peugeot paired a 10-speed Shimano Dior transmission to ensure riders have a wide range of gears to apply the torque to the ground on various inclines. Shimano MT201 hydraulic disc brakes come standard to increase stopping power while also reducing maintenance. 
The Peugeot EC01 crossover e-bike is available now for a price of €3,199 including VAT or approximately US$3,900. MediaTek's Dimensity 1200 crunches 5G AI and image data at the edge. Over the past two years, smartphone and tablet chips haven't just reached parity with laptops. Mobile AI and image cores are now responsible for gathering and processing massive quantities of user data at the network's edge. Now MediaTek is announcing its latest high-end 5G system on chip for mobile devices, Dimensity 1200, with a heavy emphasis on flagship AI multimedia features, along with the Dimensity 1100 as a smaller step up from 2019's Dimensity 1000. The new chips are both significant for technical decision makers because they will raise the performance bar for affordable Android devices, including models from some of the world's most popular brands. Though Qualcomm's flagship Snapdragon 888 and Apple's A14 Bionic are the most powerful mobile application processors, MediaTek smartphone chips actually outsold Qualcomm's last quarter, thanks to a greater emphasis on mid-range offerings. Dimensity 1200 is partially playing catch-up with rival flagship chips, boasting a 5-core imaging signal processor that can capture up to 200 megapixel photos and staggered sensor HDR videos, as well as an updated 6-core APU 3.0 AI processor with 12.5% higher performance than its predecessor. By comparison, Dimensity 1100 is capped at 108 megapixel photos and uses the slower prior generation APU 3.0 AI processor. Collectively, the new processors leverage machine learning to create nighttime panorama and multi-person bokeh photos, as well as AI-powered upscaling of standard color videos to HDR, just a few examples of real-time data analysis that wouldn't have been possible with prior generation AI chips. Media Tech credits an enhanced multitask scheduler with improving the AI core's power efficiency and latency. Dimensity 1200 also supports ultra-high screen refresh rates of up to 168 Hz, 144 Hz in Dimensity 1100 at FHD Plus resolutions, while both promise the same 90 Hz at higher QHD Plus resolutions. Each chip packs a 9-core ARM G77 GPU, up from 8 cores in rival platforms, and includes some basic ray tracing functionality for games and apps. Beyond synthetic Manhattan 3.0 benchmark peaks at 130 FPS and 120 FPS, respectively, MediaTek says the chips have enough horsepower to run player unknowns battlegrounds at 90 FPS on the Dimensity 1200, and with HDR enabled at 60 FPS on the Dimensity 1100. Both chips have 8 CPU cores, but in different arrays, Dimensity 1200 leads with one 3.0 GHz ARM Cortex-A78 core, faster at least in clock frequency than the 2.84 GHz Cortex-X1 in the Snapdragon 888 while promising a 22% CPU performance gain over the Dimensity 1000, with the ability to fall back on 3 2.6 GHz A78 cores and 4 2.0 GHz A55 cores. The 1100 chip emits the 3 GHz core and instead has 4 2.6 GHz Cortex-A78s and 4 2 GHz A55s. Since chip fabricator TSMC's 5 nanometer production lines are fully booked, Dimensity 1200 and 1100 are built on a 6 nanometer process. That reduces their transistor size compared with the 7 nanometer Dimensity 1000, but falls behind the cutting edge 5 nanometer process used by the Snapdragon 888 and Apple A14 Bionic to further shrink and improve energy efficiency. On the wireless front, the new Dimensity chips both use MediaTek's prior generation 5G modem, which supports sub 6 GHz frequencies but not millimeter wave, a limitation compared with Snapdragon based solutions. They're also limited to Wi-Fi 6 at a time when faster Wi-Fi 6E routers are beginning to become available. But both chips do support the latest version of Bluetooth, known as Bluetooth 5.2, promising improvements in both power consumption and data latency. Dimensity 1200 and 1100 will begin to appear in Android devices by March 2021. While the system on chip solutions will predominantly appear in phones and tablets, MediaTek hints that it will have additional news pertinent to 5G industrial IoT, telematics, 5G broadband, and traditional PCs in the not-too-distant future. Tesla claims a software engineer stole critical automated software from its warp drive system. Tesla is suing a recently hired software engineer who the company claims has stolen critical automated software from its warp drive ERP system. While most automakers use commonly known enterprise software from third parties like SAP, Tesla instead decided to build its own from scratch. Tesla's longtime chief information officer Jay Vijayan, 
who quietly left in January 2016, is credited for leading the development of the system, which Tesla calls Warp. Elon Musk has since pushed his companies to develop even more new enterprise engineering systems to be used across his multiple companies. For example, as previously reported, Tesla and SpaceX share some custom software platform developed for materials research. Warp covers a lot of important back-end software that automates many processes for Tesla from purchasing to manufacturing to inventory. In a new case filed with the Court of the Northern District of California, Tesla claims that a recently hired software engineer, Alex Katilov, has stolen its Warp Drive software. The automaker appears to have strong evidence that Katilov inappropriately downloaded the scripts. Tesla's InfoSec team gained access to the engineer's Dropbox account where they found the files that have no business being there. Tesla employs a team of quality assurance engineers who help identify business tasks to be automated based on input from its business leaders. The engineers write computer scripts in Python, a computer programming language, to automate those tasks and test the automated processes to ensure they function properly. These scripts are unique to Tesla and run on Warp Drive, the backend software for much of Tesla's business. Developing this complex system is expensive and time-consuming. Tesla has spent roughly 200 man-years of work to develop the quality assurance scripts, the cumulative hours spent by the quality assurance engineering team over the past 12 years. The engineer's work is also guided by the business leaders in Tesla who identify what tasks need to be automated, another large and valuable investment of its time. Tesla is looking for damages to be determined at trial and an injunction to block the defendant from sharing any information with other parties. It's not the first time that Tesla is turning to the court from protecting its trade secrets from former employees who allegedly stole important information. Tesla sued employees that they claim stole the autopilot source code and then went to Spang, a Chinese EV automaker. The automaker also sued Zoox, and it is currently embroiled in a lawsuit with Rivian over similar claims of IP theft. Well, that's about it for today. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. And do show us some love by clicking on the thumbs up button. Have a wonderful day everyone and we will be back again soon.